Hello, my name is Heather. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Walt Disney's seventh full-length feature animated film, which is titled The Three Caballeros. The Three Caballeros is basically the spiritual sequel to Saludos Amigos, at least in my eyes. I don't know how many people call it that, but it really does kind of feel like a sequel to the last one, especially since Saludos Amigos is only about 41 minutes long. Um, this does feel like a lot more of a feature length compared to the last film, or at least like a continuation of the last film. So they do kind of like work together really well and it has the same characters and there's a lot of continuity. And they're both really good films, but I do kind of enjoy this one a lot more. Um, I feel like <laughs> one of the most interesting things was I had to turn on the subtitles like pretty quickly and pretty early on in watching this film because I, I it, already it's kind of difficult understanding Donald Duck speak most of the time. I, I'm sure most of you have that issue, but try understand speaking Spanish and Portuguese. Um, you will not. <laughs> so I am so glad to turn on the subtitles because I really couldn't understand a whole lot and especially since there is so much Spanish and Portuguese intermingled in with the English in the movie. I'm glad I was able to like, I am learning Spanish like here and there a little bit but you know I understand some of the words but it's like at the same time it's a lot easier just to like have the titles on and that way you can kind of like read along with it and kind of understand as you're watching it you can kind of understand them a lot better. I actually don't really remember watching this film as a child so I kind of don't really have anything to base it on as a kid comparing it to an adult. Um, I feel like I probably have at some point but I just really don't remember honestly. But it's one of those films that I feel like I should have remembered because there's a lot to remember about it. It's, it's, it's very different <laughs> and I'll get to that in a minute. So let's go through the each, so this is another package film, there's a whole bunch of these in a slew throughout the 40s and this is like mainly due to Disney having like, the studios having like a low budget and having all these like short animations that they kind of had to just splice together into films to like make something to like put out in the theaters and I don't think there there's anything necessarily wrong with these, but it's like not something you would see nowadays, obviously, because you know now everyone ex goes to the movie theater expecting to see like at least a two-hour film, like something that comes out like once a year or something, and then these were once or twice a year, once or once or every other year or something like that, and <clears throat> this was 1942, I believe, is the year that this came out, so. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of budget for animation at that point, unfortunately. So they kind of just had to like make these short animations, splice them together. And then at least with this, with Saludos Amigos and the Three Caballeros, at least there's a theme running throughout both the movies, which is South America, obviously. So first one is called The Cold-Blooded Penguin. Um, I honestly don't really have much to talk about with this one. It was kind of boring to me. Um, I wasn't really a huge fan of it, unfortunately. It was cute and everything, but it's just basically about a penguin who doesn't want to live in Antarctica anymore. So he goes along the coast of South, Amer uh, South America and ends up in some island somewhere. <laughs> so, um, not super crazy about it, but, you know, it's fun. The next one's The Flying Gauchito, and this is where I turned on the subtitles because there was a lot of Spanish being mixed in w throughout with... It was made, it's in English, but there are very, a lot of Spanish words being mixed in with the dialogue and the narration. Um, I thought it was cute. I actually didn't have, I didn't know that little burrito meant little donkey. I didn't know this, so. So the fine Cochito is like a little donkey who has wings, and it's about a kid that like just races him and then he wins, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Not a whole lot of story here. Um, the next one is Baya. Um, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right if I remember. Um, I feel like this is where the actual film begins. The first two are kind of just like tacked on at the beginning and they're fine, but by as the first one where the actual continuity comes in from the last film. So we have Jose Carioca, he comes back and he tells Donald Duck about the state of Bahia in Brazil. 
and Brazil, if you don't know, is made up of lots of city-states, and that's apparently Bahia is, is one of the more pretty ones, more of the beautiful ones. I don't know a ton about Brazil or South America, so <laughs> I'm going based on kind of what the film has taught me. <laughs> they enter a Pava book, and it brings them to the state of Bahia. So Jose tells Donald about the singer Yaya, um, and she is played by Brazilian actor Aurora M Miranda. And Aurora Miranda, she wan wanders around the town like ho and sings, and all these like men follow her around because she's so pretty. And <laughs> so songs are very catchy. Um, I don't know any Portuguese, so I don't know. Have any idea what the song's about? I didn't look it up, but. I thought it was a very, it is a really good song. Like I said in the last video, I really enjoy the style of music. So not even, not knowing the words or what it was about didn't deter me from not enjoying the music. I think it was still very enjoyable. Um, so Donald is, Donald looks kind of like a weird, I don't want to say he's a pervert, but he kind of just, in this film, he just kind of like just has all these moments where he's just, chasing women around like constantly and just badgering them <laughs> and it's kind of weird because it's not really something that sticks with his character at all so I don't know if this is something they're trying out in the 40s or what but I don't know if you guys like watch the newer like DuckTales and everything but he's obviously not like this character anymore so <laughs> they keep like the anger obviously but it's like eh. <laughs> I don't really understand it but um it, it, so he follows her yeah, around the city, she goes about her business, and I just, you know, calm down, Donald, seriously. Um, and then a wild Panchito appears. So, Panchito Pistoles, um, he's from Mexico, he's basically representing Mexico as a character, like Jose um, represents Brazil as a character. So, there's a short introduction to him, he begins to explain different Mexican customs, which leads into the short Las Posadas. Um, and I thought this one was really cool because at least with the, the, the learning the Mexican one, I can understand the most out of it because I am learning Mexican Spanish, so with the, with the Mexican accent kind of thing. Um, and Las Posadas is the story of Mary and Joseph, and it's they're looking for a place to stay until they find a stable, and, you know, Jesus is born, that kind of thing. So it's, it's a really nice story. I really like the animation in that one. Um, I really like the little kids. They look really cute. Um, I don't know if they're kids. Maybe they're adults. I can't remember. <laughs> but they're like kind of stylized as like kind of chibi characters. So they're, re they're just short and cute. And, and I really like It's a really nice story. So um, it's just like a Mexican spin. So the next um, film short is called... Okay, I'm going to completely butcher this. But Mexico... Uh, Pat Cuero, Cuero um, Veracruz, and Acapulco, and that's basically a short about Panchito, Jose, and Donald flying around in a magic carpet, and Panchito gives them a tour of Mexico, and once again, Donald's chasing around a bunch of sunbathing women who are minding their own business, and kind of scantily clad, but I guess for at the time they're definitely scantily clad, so... It's kind of like funny seeing this in a Disney movie, especially in the 40s. Um, it's not something you'd really expect to see, but um, really there's like, I don't know, five minutes of Donald just running around chasing them around and I, what was the point? I don't know. This is probably like my least favorite part of the movie, but other than that, I mean, it moves on so it gets better after this. So, um, so You Belong to My Heart is the next short after this. Uh, once more, Donald's involved with a human woman who is played by Carmen Molina. Um, and she sings the song La Zandonga, and Donald quacks about, <laughs> basically, along with the song. So, the integration of animation into live action, I think, is really well done. I don't have, like, any issues. I think that it's well done for now standards. So, I mean... What they could do in the 40s was like kind of like mind-blowing honestly i think it's really hard it's hard to remember that this is a fairly new technique to film and animation it's amazing how they pulled it off so well in the last scene it comes pretty abruptly after this and this is my favorite part um it's a big basically like finale kind of thing big blowout the three are back together again and donald Ho jose and pechito are now the three caballeros 
So this scene is pretty chaotic, It's but it's fun, it's crazy, and I think it's a really fun end to the film. I love the fireworks and the fireworks blow off and then they're in the three languages at the end and they all say Finn or they say like a finale or whatever in the end but in their own languages. Three Caballeros seemed a little more of a documentary than Saludos Amigos. I feel like it did a better job of getting a feel for South America than the first film um, which kind of felt more like a traditional cartoon but this one I feel like goes a little stronger because the segments kind of work together a little better after once Baya started I feel like think that they kind of work together really well um so so overall I give the story a B because um there were some scenes which kind of felt tacked on I felt like the whole like Donald chasing women around was a little unnecessary maybe that's what they were like I, that's what flew for entertaining I'm sure back then but you know it's kind of like eh, nowadays so uh, animation I give an A minus there's really no issues here I think that everything is great um, everything's animated gorgeously um, especially the Las Posada scene which is my favorite animated scene in this film and then we're gonna go into voice acting again A everyone did a great job there's no I have uh, no issues with anyone I think everyone was like chosen like amazingly i'm once i turned on the subtitles and everything um it was much better but so i wouldn't like really fault that to the actors they did pick actual actors from their countries jose carioca was actually played by a brazilian man and i believe the same with panchito pistoles then with the music i give it absolutely 100 percent a plus it's amazing i love it it's great so <laughs> no problems here so for this video i drew the character yaya um and she basically i realized she's not a cartoon <laughs> she's probably going to be the only one who's not an animated character but she was like a named character in the film and she was like um you know she was present enough in the film that i felt like she was the one who deserved a drawing so I'm going to be drawing her and then I really hope that you guys enjoyed listening to this and if you guys have anything to add or any comments or anything, please feel free to leave comments. You know, I'd love to hear what you guys feel about these films and everything. Um, I really enjoy watching them and I'm enjoying like thinking about them a little more, you know, diving into them as like a, a little bit of a review, I guess. but. This is more like just like how much I enjoyed it, how much I think hopefully other people would enjoy it coming from an animation standpoint and coming from like an artist standpoint and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave comments, please subscribe if you haven't, please leave likes, all these things would be super amazing. Um, please check out my Patreon if you haven't and uh, of course there'll be a little bit about that afterwards. Um, I do a lot of like sketches and stuff and I do some uh, more naughty things <laughs> so if you're into that please check that out um, <laughs> I draw comics please the juvenile diversion is my web comic and I, I have I'm a little away from that right now but I am working on the next story so it's coming along the storyline <laughs> working on that script so <laughs> thank you everyone for watching I'll see you all in the next one bye everyone Thank you, as always, to my patrons, Andrew Lindo, Ben Wright Human, Brandon Tinge, Colin Warmbrot, Council of Geeks, Dark Leap Master, Hexapus Inc., Jack Mahantenny, Jesse Girona, Merrick Bennett, Story Comic, and as always, a very special thank you to my $10 patrons, Corbin Kovalt and Steve Zarzinski.